Hello there and welcome. My name is Luis Coelho. I am a Brazilian international master, professional chess player, writer and coach and I am here to provide you with my first training session to chessvideos.tv. I would like first of all to thank Joshua for the flattering invitation to record this training session and I would also like to congratulate him for using technology to give chess teachers and professionals in general a new opportunity to transmit their knowledge to chess enthusiasts all over the world. I guess this kind of service tends to become more and more popular over the years and uh, Joshua is doing a great job at being one of the pioneers on this area. This game here I'm about to share with you uh, was one of the best tournament games I have played in the past couple of years since I have semi-retired from chess competition. I learned to play chess at the age of 15 and uh, through dedication and my training and uh, in practicing in tournaments I managed to get the International Master title at the age of 21, only six years after I learned how to move the chess pieces. Uh, from the age of 15 to the age of 23 I spent eight years studying and practicing the chess game extensively but not teaching, dedicating myself only to learning the game. A couple of years ago though, exactly two and a half years ago, I have decided to semi-retire, let's say, from chess competition to start teaching the game and uh, I have been enjoying myself tremendously at doing this but at the same time it arises the question to the professional player uh, are you really still competitive are you I played this game a couple of months ago in a Brazilian team championship and uh, my opponent was uh, usually a fierce adversary I used to have uh, when I used to play three tournaments every month and uh, I was very pleased with the fact that I managed to play an excellent game here and uh, win in a very typical model victory for black in the symmetrical variation of the English opening. More than anything, that's the kind of game that uh, tells the professional player, hey, you're still, you still competitive. I have to admit I had great feelings about this game. My opponent started with knight f3, c5, g3, knight c6, bishop g2. Of course, that is not the English opening. This is the ready system or the king's Indian attack. One of the first hypermodern opening systems that were developed when the hypermodern chess school uh, was invented in the early 20s. Now, I played g6, castle, bishop g7, d3 e5, c4, knight g7, knight c3, and d6. And what do we have now? An English opening, the symmetrical variation. I have played this position quite a few times as black prior to this game, but usually this is the move order that took place in the game. c4, c5, knight to c3, knight to c6, g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7, knight f3, e5, castle d6, d3, knight g7. And we have exactly the same position that took place in my game against Braga after move 7. Now it is white's turn to move and my opponent played the most typical move there is in positions like this. a3. White's intention is to swing the rook over to b1 and then after b4 to start an initiative on the queen side. In most cases this rook on b1, it's important to be noticed, it coordinates beautifully with the bishop on g2 on attacking the pawn at b7 once the b-file is open, of course. This is something the black player must always keep in mind when playing positions like this. First and foremost, white's plan will be concentrated on the queen side. And the reason why the white player must do so is that his most advanced pawn is right now on the queen side. And uh, there is a very 
close relation to where your most advanced pawn is to where you must focus your game plan on. And the reason is that wherever you have your most advanced pawn, that is the sector of the board where you're going to have more space. And wherever you have more space, that is where you usually are ready to attack your opponent. Uh, a factor that I like in this position here for black is the fact that black has a small advantage of space in the opening already, something that is not very uncommon in positions of the English opening. Black has one extra pawn uh, in the fourth rank in the center, two versus one, and this provides the black player with a small advantage of space. But that does not mean at all that black has an advantage in the position. And the reason for that is the fact that the most important square on the board is controlled by the white pieces, the d5 square. In order to attain this advantage of space in the center of the board, the black player needed to concentrate his pawns on dark squares. And that inevitably and automatically creates light squared weaknesses. Particularly the d5 square is an annoyance for black because it simply belongs to the white player, although it is officially black's territory because that is the fifth rank of the board. But white controls that square directly with the pawn on c4 and the knight on c3 and indirectly with the bishop on g2. The fact that white controls this awesomely important square guarantees the white player an even battle against black's small advantage of space in the center. That is where the strategical battle starts. Who can perform better? The black player with his advantage of space or the white player with the control of the most important square of the board and of important light squares in general, especially with the action of his excellent light squared bishop on the long light squared diagonal. I continued with castle. And now my opponent played the most typical move there is in this position as well, the complement of the a3 idea. The rook comes to b1, and now white is ready to push his b-pawn to b4. Now, another question arises. Should the black player push his a-pawn to a5 right now? I would say this is the first question of strategical relevance in this game. Because the first impression is that by playing a5, the black player is weakening severely light squares in his position, particularly the b5 square. Let's say a5, what about b5? Isn't that relevant? Isn't that very weak? Can white exploit that weakness immediately by playing his knight to b5? The answer is no. a5 is definitely the best move for black in this position and the reason is that knight b5 being the only possible move to exploit the weakness of the b5 square is simply a bad move strategically and the reason for that is that remember white's opening strategy he wants to control d5 that is the key square that is the, mo the most important square in the board right now and he needs this knight on c3 to control the d5 square. When he plays his knight to b5, black can already push d5. And this, my friends, is a dream position for black in positions like these. His advantage of space in the center has now increased to two pawns advantage instead of just one. Here we have three pawns against one, and here we have two against none. In both cases,